Welcome to How Preschool Teachers Do It. This is Allison Kentos. I am an early childhood educator. And this is Cindy Tarabush. I am an early childhood consultant. This podcast is for parents and early childhood professionals. Let our experience and research-based knowledge become your guide. Happy Monday, preschool peeps. I feel like they can tell that we were just laughing before we <laughs> started. We, the, were. Right. we were, we were, we were, we were, we uh, were, but we're done. And now we're going to talk about today's topic. Yes, we are. Okay. Yes, we are. We'll pull it together. We promise. Um, today we're talking <laughs> yeah. about something that we've been hearing from colleagues and friends from different places in the country having to do with the use of the technology that we seem to be harnessing for education, but using it to do things like end snow days and uh, breaks and yeah. federal um, holidays and you know uh, school systems saying to children and teachers and families, instead of having this day off, we're gonna have your children get on remote. So again, I've heard it, Allison, you tell me, I've heard it about snow days I've heard it about snow days. I've heard entire states have made the decision to eliminate snow days. Mm-hmm. Um, I haven't heard it about breaks, but you said you heard it about- snow I days. heard it about breaks. So yeah. I heard that there, was, there were some states that were considering things like if you have a, a break, some schools have had a break in the winter, like during February or beginning of March, not attached to a particular holiday that they are thinking of eliminating so the children will be remote while they do things that they used to do during those breaks, like clean schools or whatever. Yeah. Um, I, you, you yourself lived through something interesting on election day. Last week, election day, our state governor said that no children, no people are allowed in the buildings of the public schools. A lot of the public schools in our area are used as polling places. So the children were not allowed to be at school. And so my district said, well, we'll do a remote learning day on election day. Well, others others did not because I was doing professional development all day for teachers who were given a a learning day that day. Yeah, which, which, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, so we- So there's variety. For one day, yeah. Right, there's variety. Uh, And the one that, of course, where Allison and I are on the northeast coast of the United States, snow days are all the talk now, the elimination of snow days. I have to tell you, if you have, you live in an area where you don't have that as an issue, snow days are just a little bit of childhood magic. To wake up in the morning and discover (laughs) school is closed is like the happiest day of the year for many people administrators, yeah. teachers, and children alike. Children alike. Yeah. So I, I don't, I don't know, you know, we have mandates as to how many school days we have to do in a year. Right. 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 Right, right. now that mandate is 180 days where we are. I don't know yeah. if that's universal, right. but I know yeah. we have 180 days we have to do. And I feel like we did that 180 days before we had all this remote learning. We managed to do it. I understand that they sometimes had to add days on for emergency yeah. closings like snow days, or if you're not in an area with snow, let's say, I don't know, your boiler hurricanes. had a problem or you had a hurricane, hurricanes, or yeah. electrical yeah. issue and Issues. they had to close school. Uh, and we didn't have the understanding that we could ju- just jump onto remote learning at that time. So it was just a day off, right? Your school has no power or no water and yeah. you're closed. And that I'm hearing is not going to be so much the case anymore. I I sort of understand that for uh, excessive Mm -hmm. days off, but if it's not excessive and if it doesn't take you beyond your mandate for how many days you have to do in school, then my question is this, why, 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 yeah, why are we doing that? Why are we taking these things that were Uh, happy surprises, sudden mental health breaks. Uh, And and I understand, I understand this too. Yeah. It's right. It's all the memories my kids have of magical snow days. I have great memories of snow days from when I was a kid. I mean, great memories of like the whole family was home and we would build snowmen outside and play and just, just be together, you know, and you don't get that too often anymore just being together and I feel like why, why are we taking that away from the children 
or the you know, one argument, you know? Allison, one argument can be, well, you know, families are working. Uh, okay, but if it's a day off, don't they still have to make arrangements? Regardless, they if do. they're children, they if do. they're, if the children are off from school and they're young enough where you have to make arrangements for them, isn't that still the case if they're remote learning? You can't just you can go, oh, well, well, you're attending school on the computer, um, eight-year-old, so I'm just going to go off to work for umpteen yeah. hours. You See can't, yeah. <laughs> you right? Can you're you're still going to have to have arrangements for your children right. for the days where they're suddenly remote. I, I right. would assume, I, and again, I don't know this, I would assume that at this point that they're doing that and saying to people, well, we'll close school earlier at the end of the school year or the... I don't know. But you know what I so, think? Why? Like, why? Why? <laughs> why? What's the difference? We always had school, you know, in our area, it was like September to June. Why all of a sudden do you want to do what? September to May? I mean, I don't, for the four days of snow that you might have to make, a, I mean, what? why? What's that why? giving you? What? What's that giving you? An extra week in June? Like, who cares? Right, like, and if you want an extra week in June, like my district, we start in August, so we do get out like a week early in June. You want to do go. that? Go ahead, you know. But why? But you want to now? My district starts in August and eliminate snow days, so now I'm going to get out on Memorial Day. Why? Why? <laughs> why? I mean, it, extra it'll be nice on Memorial Day when that's oh, your last so day. Nice. You'll be like, well, oh, out. this rocks. This but... is nice. Now I should take vacation when everybody else is still in school. Yeah. Okay. But do I need that? No, no. I mean, what? I just don't understand. Like, don't you, you have think... 180 days? You don't need to cram it all no. into this like little period. You know, I don't understand that. Don't you think that there's value, Allison? I think that there's value in the happy surprise of having a day off or in those breaks that they may be trying to shorten or eliminate like winter, spring break kind of things. Yes. If they try to shorten or eliminate these, you know, there's... These are important breaks, not only from the daily day-to-dayness of being in that crowd all the time, mm -hmm. but like winter break, for example, typically happens at the height of cold and flu season. So we get to be separate. When I taught, we would be like kids' noses running everywhere. And we used to yeah. say to each other, well, thank goodness the break is coming. Everybody yeah. will be separate and they can get over their germs and we start fresh. And it gave right. the chance for that. Uh, yeah. It wasn't just about these other things. Spring break tends to happen at high allergy season. Yeah. <laughs> when children have like yeah. sinus infections. Yeah. I'm not saying that yeah. allergies are contagious, contagious. I'm saying they need a little rest. They're yes. dealing with these issues. Yeah. I think it just takes a little, little tiny, let's chip away at childhood, you know? Let's yeah. chip it away. And this is another chip. I don't want childhood chipped away. I, I no. feel like people making decisions to chip away at childhood should really re-examine that. And I know that this episode, we could get bashed. We say this sometimes. We're going to get bashed for this episode. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I feel like yeah. certain populations are going to love it and others are going to hate it. But I have to ask, <laughs> I have to ask the question, why? Why? I... I I almost challenge anybody to give us a really solid reason why the days yeah. can't be done the way that they have been done. Just because we have the technology, does that mean we have to use it 24 seven? Right. I mean, and I'm all for the technology. I mean, it was great having the technology oh, yeah. when we closed for so long for COVID or if we ever have to close again for COVID, it's great to have, you know, mm -hmm. like instead of ending the school year in March and just be like, we got nothing, <laughs> right? You know, <laughs> you know, I'm sorry, you're gonna have to repeat. You were able here. to carry on. You in were some able way. to carry on, and that was great. But should we take everything away because we can do it? No, you know, I, I just feel like the mental health impl implications of it. I mean, that, that shows kids like you just are here to just work, 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 work. There is no break. There is no fun. There is no play. There's nothing to look forward to. There's nothing to anticipate. There's nothing. Here you go. You know, and, and I think we're forgetting that a lot of times children are learning when they're not at school. They learn so much when they're not at school. School is not the only place that they learn. They well, will learn thank so you much for when... pointing this out. Yeah. yeah. Right. And so they need a day to be in nature and to be in the snow and to be off with their families for whatever the reason might be it might not be snow you know but they still get a day home and they'll learn so much just from that you know school is not the 
the only place that kids learn. So you're forcing them to just nonstop be at school, you know, that's and, not- And if the fun. family, if the adults need to still go to work, so they make arrangements for the children. And I was a working right. parent of kids, young kids, I get it. So you make arrangements with friends, family, caregivers, anybody that you can make arrangements with if you need to be at work, you know, maybe the kids still get enriching experiences there and they get to spend yeah. time with their siblings. And I think what we're saying is that time doesn't count as much, but honestly, it counts as it much. Counts I don't- a lot. Yeah, it counts a lot. I don't understand. Lot. I just, I, it counts I'm just gonna keep circling the drain around the drain why. About why, you know? And talking about like how parents have to find arrangements and find somebody to, to be with their children when, when it is a snow day or a break, now it's like not only do you have to find somebody who who can be with your children but you need to find somebody who could be with your children and know how to do the technology which means a lot of grandparents do not know like if i did that to my mom my mom would be like they're skipping school today because i don't even know how to do this you know yeah. I mean, and she's a grandma you know what i mean like she would not know and so now it's like i feel like that's even more pressure it's like you can't just say okay kids you're going to grandma's for the day it's like, no, I now need to find somebody who can run this technology for a week during right. your spring break. And that's right. not really fair. You know, it may not it's, be the people that you've been depending on. They may not right. have the internet speed. Right. And now we're back to maybe multiple children trying to get online at the same time, which They're, is not ideal. Too, not ideal. Um, yep. I, I think that this technology is really good for the time in which we're living. Yeah. And, and I think it's very important that we have it and I'm grateful for it. And beyond this time, someday, if you all can imagine this not being an issue anymore, I think yeah. it will be good for extra support for students who need extra support. Yeah. Yeah. Like you don't have to stay after school for extra help or tutoring. I might have yeah. hours where I can get on Zoom with you and help you out. It will yeah. be good for relationships with families. Families... Yeah who oh, couldn't attend things, who couldn't come to things, can be Zoomed mm -hmm. in now. Families yeah. who wanted to be your class's mystery reader, but they had to be at work. Well, maybe they can either send a video or Zoom in at their break or lunch hour. Yeah. Um, it's gonna have good purpose, I promise. We're yeah. gonna figure, we're going to get there to the new normal and we're gonna figure out what is the good purpose of having this educational technology. Yeah. We absolutely will figure it out. Yeah. But taking away these yeah. days, I'm not convinced that this is the good purpose of it. I yeah. think it's a case of just because you can doesn't mean you doesn't should. Mean you should, yeah. yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know, you know, there are children, especially special education children who do need a lot of support. So yeah. can't we say to those families on the snow day or the holiday, can't we say to them, Here's a choice for you. We have certain staff who are available to give your child some extra support that, that day. Yeah, yeah. If you would like it. I had a conversation yeah. with my kids when I heard about the elimination of snow days in some towns. My kids, as listeners, longtime listeners know, my, my boys are in their 20s. And so this whole notion of having to deal with school is in their past. And thank, I feel very grateful in mine, yeah. but I, <laughs> for a variety of reasons, not just yeah. this, uh, but I, I said to them, you know, if they took away your snow days, I think that I would probably have said to you, oh, forget it. You'll just be absent today. Go get the sled and go sled. <laughs> and do you know, both my boys said, no, you wouldn't have. Both my no. boys said, yes. They said, mom, you, attendance at school mattered to you because you always told us how important it was to meet our responsibilities. And you would have said, well, the school is open on the computer and this is your responsibility. And you know, they could be right. I mean, they could, they were like, mom, <laughs> you are all about being responsible. And that's really, I mean, I have two responsible young adults. We can't knock that, I think. But I was right. all about meeting your responsibilities and being where you're supposed to be. Okay. I, I wonder though, um, I, I really do wonder if there were points at which I would have said to them, uh, 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 it's taking away because I remember the magic of snow days. I don't know. They yeah. claim, no, they claim I would have made them go and families could feel that way. Families could feel like I would rather choose for you to go and sled yeah. than do this, See, but no, I feel I'm... pressure. Families yeah. could be thinking, I feel pressure now. 
Yeah. And and for how see, many generations I, did we prize perfect attendance, which, you, which we need to stop God, doing to, entirely? Yeah, that's, we need Done. to stop doing that. Yeah. Keep your sick <laughs> children home. Yeah. But, but we were raised, and you were too, Allison. I was raised in the perfect attendance generations. Yeah. So I yeah, I might've felt pressure and I worry that families who would rather be spending time throwing snowballs with their children, which has great value, Right. will be like nope sorry no snowballs because your school is open on the computer yeah and that's sad to feel that pressure you know it because it is you know i mean i think i would be the mom that would be like you're taking the day off we're going sledding that would be totally me <laughs> you say that but my boy said no about me i know i know but my parents um they always let us like take days off like like which not, I'm not, I had good attendance, but they were like, if you work hard and you do, you know, good things, then we'll let you take your birthday off of, of school and we'll all take it off and we'll do whatever you want on your birthday and you don't have to go to school. And so like my parents always had this, like, I think they kind of understood like there are other things in life other than school, you know? And I think I kind of have that mentality a little bit. If it was a lot of days off of school, I don't know if I would do all of them, but I definitely think I would do some, you know, cause there's still value in this family time that you would be having, you know? So I don't know, but I get the pressures of being a parent nowadays is different yeah. than maybe when I was growing up, you know? So like- Oh yeah, I think I it's you different. Know, like, it's very I, different. It is, it's social media now and it's different and it's all sorts yeah. of, uh, you know, constantly connected stuff. I also wonder if it could go bad in the other direction. Maybe bad's the wrong word, but become challenging in the other direction. Think about this, Allison. When my kids were little and when I was young, we didn't take vacations during school weeks. We only yeah, took vacations no, during the summer spring. Is it now going to be like every time a family wants to go somewhere, they'll just be like, can we zoom into your classroom? That's also not doable. Yeah. No, randomly. No, it's Folks, not. it's just, this is hard. This whole yeah. having remote students with in-person students, just so you know, it is really hard really to manage and plan for. Hard, very hard. I am doing At it what, every day. It is hard. It's really <laughs> yeah, hard. It's, At what point do we all just go too far with it? Yeah, yeah. And this may be yeah, a step too far. This is a step too far. Yeah. I. I I don't know. And maybe I'm totally wrong. And there may be people out there, family saying, no, I'm really glad for it. Uh, you are welcome to disagree with us and tell us why. Just answer tell our question. Tell us why. You, know, yeah. you can respectfully contact us through our website, send yeah. a contact form oh, and absolutely. say, I was listening to your episode and I have a really good reason why I prefer that they don't have snow days yeah. or those, yeah. hum, those breaks or whatever. Please let us know. And maybe on a future episode, we will revisit this with the what we learned about people's yeah. reasons why. Or yeah. why you like it. Maybe you like it. Uh, feel yeah. free to share that with us. And again, let's underline the word respectfully. Allison might get sad when we're bashed. Yeah. So you're, you're welcome to come in <laughs> and respectfully correct us. Yeah. And maybe we will share that. But I, I just, I worry about that. And I wonder this too. If families think along the lines of, um, no, those are important parts of childhood and important days we've spent together. And I don't want to lose those days. You all need to stand up for that. You're going to have to yeah. advocate for that because no one's yeah. going to listen to staff members, administrators, or teachers advocate for that on the higher levels. I have news yeah. for you. The, you the, have the, got to go to <laughs> your departments of education and say you. no. Yeah. Yeah. It has to come from you guys, has which I think we've parents. said, we've said on this podcast many times that, you know, go advocate and go attend those meetings so that you yeah. know what's going on in the school. You know, they're, they, they will listen to you as a parent for sure. But they're not going to necessarily listen to the people who are entrenched in it. No, they're not going to. So I, I think, yeah, <laughs> I, no. I know that firsthand, no. no. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. And it's just, you know, the nature of the beast. So I it think is. It is. when yeah. families though, when families band together and go to meetings or attend Zoom meetings and have a lot to say about things, even yeah. if nothing changes immediately, it's part of the public record and you can keep, Yes. and you can keep going to higher and higher authorities, folks. That's what advocacy is. If you don't like what happens at the lower levels, you go higher and local, I go mean, higher you go and higher, and higher, higher and higher and higher. Yep. Yeah. Uh, I, and, and again, you and I could be totally off about this, Allison. We could be 
completely wrong about this. This is not a research-based topic like a lot no. of us are because, <laughs> because there's no yeah. research. There's, there's no, no research on this. definitive thing, right? This is there's, so new. Yeah. You don't know a lot how of this stuff could, that's happening now yeah. is new. <laughs> you don't know how, how this is going to either benefit or um, not benefit, do the yeah. opposite for children. Yeah. We don't know that for years. So I'm just tossing yeah. it out there. Like there I toss go. out every other idea yeah. now <laughs> saying, uh, I don't know if this is such a good thing. Yeah. 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 We are very interested in what you all have to say about it. Extremely interested. So Allison is going to let you know how to get in touch with us. Yeah. Find us. On the interwebs there. Go ahead, Allison. On the the, the interwebs. (laughs) Like, (laughs) we're dating ourselves now. (laughs) I don't think we really are. Sometimes I use words like that. and People are like, huh? Okay, go ahead. What what do you mean? Yeah, I do that too. Uh, All right. So you can find us on our website, howpreschoolteachersdoit.com. There is a comment section there that you can always reach us on. Uh, we promise to update that website, oh, but the sorry. comment section is still valid and still works. Okay. You can also Me. find us. It's she's the tech person. I know, I know nothing about tech. Okay. All right. Every episode, I apologize for this. I'm just going to continue. Go ahead. I'm not going to mention it anymore. We're just going to know that somebody's right. Okay. And, <laughs> uh, you can also find us on Facebook. How preschool teachers do it podcast we're on there you can message us there we have a lot of people who message us through that um you can find us on pretty much anywhere that a podcast is given now itunes iheart amazon music spreaker spotify spotify soundcloud SoundCloud. If, if it gives podcasts you can find us on there so if you're looking for a new way to listen also if you'd like to see us and sometimes Rusty's ears popping in screen, there he is. Find us on YouTube. All right. So we have a YouTube channel and you can find us there. And we're looking for followers because there's some benefits that happen. I heard if we get more followers. So yeah. you, you know, if you'd like to see my lovely face every single week <laughs> and Cindy's lovely face, <laughs> that's where you can go there. Then you can see all of our facial expressions. <laughs> Priceless. Which, which is priceless. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, um, <yeah. laughs> I think I covered all of it this time. I believe so. Usually so, I forget something. <laughs> no, I think you got it. I think you got it. Uh, yeah. Understanding and patience, forgiveness and grace as we walk through this crazy time. We will yeah. catch you next time on the podcast, folks. <laughs> Bye, peeps. Bye. <laughs>